Problem number six, we're being asked to simplify each expression here. In part A, probably the easiest way to think about this one is 2 over B divided by 4 over C. Well, I can divide a fraction by multiplying its reciprocal. So instead of writing divided by 4 over C, I'll write times C over 4. Then I can do some cross canceling. I've got that common factor of 2 and multiply across and I'm done. C over 2B looks like the final answer. I can take a similar approach here in letter B. Here's the big fraction bar. So this is 5, I could even write 5 over 1, times the reciprocal of the second fraction, which would be C squared over 20. So dividing by 20 over C squared, same thing as multiplying by C squared over 20. Again, I've got uh, some cross canceling I can do. And when I multiply across, I get C squared on the top and 4 on the bottom. Letter C is what we call a FOIL problem. It's a binomial times a binomial. And I just need to work through the four steps. So FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. The first product, 2A times 2A, would be 4A squared. The outer would be 2A times B, so plus 2AB. The inner would be minus 2A times B, so minus 2AB. And the last appears to be minus B squared. This one, of course, works out pretty nice because those two middle terms wipe each other out. And I'm left simply with 4A squared minus B squared. Letter D, I've got three items to multiply together. Again, I think I'll put a one under this to make it look like a fraction. And then I just need to find all of the cross-canceling possibilities. I do have a common factor of A that divides out. Oh, I have B also. As far as the numbers go, I see a five here that can be divided out. And I see a three that can be divided out. Okay, is that it? No, actually I see more. I've got a 2 uh, going into both 2 and 4. So I can divide that 2 there and there. And now I can multiply across. And actually this one works out pretty nice. The only thing I have left on the top is 3 times 2C, which is 6C. But the bottom, everything slashed out. It's just a 1, which means I don't even have a fraction anymore. The answer here is just 6C. Letter E is basically the same type of problem that we did in parts A and B. I can divide by that bottom fraction there by simply multiplying by the reciprocal, so times 4B over A. What common factors do we have? I do have an A that wipes out essentially one of these A's, right? A squared means A times A. Same thing with the B. I have a B that wipes out one of those B's. And I don't have any numbers that divide out. When I multiply across, it looks like I have 4A on the top and just a single B left on the bottom. So 4A over B. In problem 7, we're being given an inverse trig statement and asked to work it out by hand. We want the exact simplified answer, so we're not going to the calculator here. Remember that inverse trig functions take in ratios or coordinates and send out angles. Of course, when I see a number like negative 1 or 0 or 1, it makes me think that I may not be able to draw a triangle picture that I'll need to go to the unit circle. Now remember, the restrictions are so important. The sine inverse function only knows about angles between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So I should only be looking in this portion of the unit circle. Let's see, the sine function on the unit circle returns the B coordinate. So that's what that negative 1 is. I need a spot on this circle with a B coordinate of negative 1. Well, the only such spot is this one right here. This is the point 0, comma, negative 1. Here's the B coordinate. There is no other point like that. Therefore, this is the angle that we're talking about. And we know that that angle is negative pi over 2, or negative 90 degrees. The directions don't specify degrees versus radians. You cannot write 3 pi over 2, 
or 270 because the inverse sine function has never heard of those angles. It's literally only heard of angles between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 or negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Letter B, cosine inverse negative 1. This is the same idea. Now the cosine inverse function only knows angles between 0 and 180. So I got to find a point somewhere in there. The cosine function gives you the A coordinate on the unit circle. So I need a point where the A coordinate is negative 1. I believe the only such spot would be right here. This is the point negative 1 comma 0. There's an A value of negative 1. So that's the angle in question. Obviously this is pi radians or 180 degrees. And then letter C, tangent inverse is like sine inverse. It only knows between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees. Let's see, the tangent function, what does that do on the unit circle? That gives the ratio B divided by A. Well, the only way that B divided by A could come out to be equal to 0 would be if the top here is 0. If the bottom was 0, the whole thing would be undefined. But if the top is 0, the whole fraction will be 0. So I'm essentially looking for a place where the B coordinate is a 0. That only happens in that particular section right here. This would be the spot 1 comma 0. If I worked out the little ratio, it would be B over A, 0 over 1, which of course is equal to 0. Well, what angle is represented by this spot? It is, of course, just 0 degrees or 0 radians. So tangent inverse of 0 is equal to 0. Problem number 8, which of these three functions is even? The graph is symmetrical across the y-axis. Well, you just have to think about what the pictures look like. The sine function is the hill in the valley. If I extend that the other direction, this function is not symmetrical across the y-axis. If I folded it here, it does not land on itself. How about cosine? Cosine is the vase. And again, if I extend it on the other side, I get something like this. Aha, this is the one where if I fold it right along the y-axis, the two halves would land directly on top of each other. So cosine is an even function. I think tangent is not. Tangent is the one that looks like this with the asymptotes running down the side. If you folded it along the y-axis, the two pieces are not going to land on each other. So tangent is not an even function. And then lastly, number nine, I want to find the value of theta in this picture. Since it's inside a right triangle, I know it's acute. Dealing with acute angles is the easiest because I know I can just go right to an inverse trig function and obtain my answer. Let's see, let me write a little trig statement here. In this right triangle, I'm given the opposite side and the hypotenuse. That makes me think sine function. The sine of theta would be 9 twentieths. Again, I know I'm in the first quadrant, so theta is just going to be sine inverse of that particular ratio. I can get that on the calculator. I am being asked to give the answer in radians. I'm in radian mode, and I go sine inverse 9 twentieths for a value of 0.4668 radians. And we have our angle.